In the last video, we used the recursion tree method to build an exact expression for the running time t of n by adding together the level sums at each level of the recursion tree and we got a decreasing geometric series in the process. We derived an expression for the summation of k terms of a geometric series with the first term a and the common ratio r whose value is less than 1 as a times 1 minus r to the power k divided by 1 minus r. We used this formula to solve for this decreasing geometric series and in the process we developed an exp exact expression for t of n which turned out to be this and thereby we showed that t of n is in theta of n square because the dominant term here was 3 by 2 n square. So this was a quadratic expression whose running time is theta of n square. A slightly different way to prove that t of n is theta of n square would have been to independently argue that t of n is in big omega of n square and t of n is in big O of n square. By independently showing these two facts, we could have indirectly shown that t of n is in theta of n square. Now the reason for independently proving these two could have been to slightly simplify our calculations. For example, it's pretty easy to argue that t of n is in big omega of n square. Why is that? Because if you look at the recursion tree, we know that t of n needs to be the summation of all the values on the nodes throughout the tree. If you look at the value at the topmost level, at the root of the tree, it's n square. So whatever be the value of this, uh, 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 of the sum of the values of all these nodes, we know that the overall value, the sum of the values of all these nodes must be greater than n square. Because n square is just one of the terms. It's just one of the costs. So t of n is actually the summation of all these terms which must be greater than n square. So t of n must be greater than n square. In other words, t of n must be bounded from below by a constant multiple of n square where the constant here is just 1. And that's basically the definition of omega of n square. For a function to be omega of n square, it must be bounded from below by a constant multiple of n square. And we have shown that t of n is bounded from below by n square. So t of n is in big omega of n square. How do we argue that t of n is in big O of n square? Well, we need to develop an upper bound for t of n, which is a constant multiple of n square. We need to show that t of n is bounded from above by a constant multiple of n square. Now, if this is the value of t of n, the overall value, we, we've already computed what the first uh, term is. It's n multiplied by t of 1. But if you look at the second term, n square multiplied by the summation of h terms of this geometric series. What if we had allowed this series to go all the way up to infinity instead of stopping at h minus 1? If we had done that, we would have got a simpler expression for the summation. Right? Imagine k to be tending to infinity here k is the number of terms in this series. Suppose this series 
is infinite. It doesn't terminate after k terms. It goes all the way up to infinity. So the number of terms in the series tends to infinity, and the common ratio is less than one. So what happens to r to the power k? R to the power k, where when r is less than one, when r is a number between zero and one, and k is tending to infinity, this this number r to the power k is going to tend to zero. So one minus r to the power k is going to tend to one. So if this had been an infinite geometric series, the value of The summation would have been a divided by one minus r. Now this is a simpler. Uh, this is a simpler uh, formula than this formula. It's easier to remember. So one way to arrive at an upper bound on T of n could have been to allow this series to go all the way up to infinity. To allow infinite terms in the series. and in that case we would have we would have increased the value of the right hand side by by replacing this h minus 1 with infinity we would have increased the value of the right hand side and so the right hand side would have been greater than equal to t of n with infinity substituted substituting for h minus 1 right so this is less than or equal to n times t of 1 plus n square summation of i equal to 0 to infinity we want to get something larger now because there are additional terms over and above the h terms that are here and what's the value of this infinite series it's 1 divided by 1 minus 3 because a is equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 by 3 so 1 divided by 1 by 3 or 1 divided by 2 by 3 which is basically 3 by 2 so we could argue that t of n is less than or equal to n times t of 1 plus 3 by 2 n square now this is a quadratic expression of the form an square plus bn plus c where a is 3 by 2 b is t of 1 and c is 0 And we saw in the previous chapter that a n square plus b n plus c is in Vigo of n square. Right? We can choose. Uh, we we can show that this quadratic expression is less than or equal to two n square for sufficiently large n. Right? We can pick a constant c, which is Greater than the constant coefficient of the highest order term, which is one point five here. So if we pick a constant like two, we can argue that two n square is going to be an upper bound on this quadratic expression once n becomes sufficiently large. Right, and that's easy to see because when will this expression be less than or equal to two n square? Well, we can take three by two n square on the other side, so we'll get n square divided by two. That needs to be greater than or equal to n times t of one, or n square needs to be greater than or equal to n times t two uh, n times t of one. Now that's obviously going to be true sooner or later because n square has a higher rate of growth. The right hand side, which has n square, is going to have a higher rate of growth than any linear expression in n. So it doesn't matter what the value of t of one is, as long as it's constant. The right hand side is going to have a higher rate of growth. So, I leave the details to you to work out. But basically, we can argue pretty easily that t t of n is upper bounded or bounded from above by twice of n square for sufficiently large n. And so, t of n, by definition, is in big O of n square. So t of n is in big omega of n square because it's bounded from below by n square, and it's in big O of n square because it's bounded from above by two n square. So 
Having proven that t of n is empty omega of n square and below of n square, we have effectively proved that t of n is in theta of n square. But the way we did it here was not by deriving an exact expression for t of n, which we did in the last video. If we had an exact expression, we could directly argue that t of n is in theta of n square because that exact expression turned out to be a quadratic expression. In this case, to simplify our calculations, we just argued independently that t of n is, in, is, is bounded from below by some constant multiple of n square and is bounded from above by another constant multiple of n square. And thus, we showed that t of n can be sandwiched between two constant multiples of n square. Instead of deriving an exact value for t of n, we showed that it can be sandwiched between two constant multiples of n square. And we argued in this way that t of n is in theta of n square. Now, this kind of an approach works. This kind of an approach works because the value of the, co the common ratio is less than 1. Because if the value of the common ratio had been greater than 1, then allowing this series to go all the way up to i equal to infinity wouldn't have helped. The summation would have been infinite. And we already know that infinity is going to be an upper bound on t of n, because this is a finite series. And that doesn't help. Knowing that infinity is, a, is, is an upper bound on t of n is of it's basically useless information. But because we had a decreasing geometric series here, we could allow the series to extend to an infinite number of terms. And we could still have an upper bound on t of n because the summation of the series is going to be a finite number. So we have to note that this approach is going to work only when the value of the common ratio is less than 1, or in other words, when we have a decreasing geometric series.